talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today, Christian Harloff. Welcome back to another episode of Collider Movie Talk. Ashley, thank you for holding it together as you think about Ellis telling you about taping Turtles mating. I mean, I wasn't going to go there, but I'm glad I was going to go there. I said said mating. Now you went there. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Talk now about our it. meeting yeah. has become public for the whole world to know. I'm well, meeting about Mike Ellis is here too. So. I'm here and I am here to celebrate <laughs> May 25th, ladies and gentlemen. 39 years ago today, we were introduced to a galaxy far, far away. And I have sp- it's made my life infinitely richer and my bank account infinitely tinier. Happy Star Wars Day, everybody. I also hear John Schnapp. Yeah. Pan down. Pan down. Uh, Pan down. It's an inside joke. Before we get to the main topics of the day, I want to let you guys know that we're going to be starting something a little new here. We're going to be utilizing Facebook Live. If you go to Collider.com on Facebook, go and join over there. At the end of this show today, myself, Ellis, and Schnapp are going to do a Q&A on the Facebook page. It'll be Facebook Live directly after this show. So Go on over to Facebook, join the Collider.com page over there, and you will see the stream and make sure you get in a couple of questions at the end of the show. All right, let's talk about movies. Ashley, what do we got? In a report from THR, veteran producer Charles Roven has worked on every DC Comics movie at Warner since 2005's Batman Begins, is no longer producing certain DC movies. Talks are underway to have Roven shift to a different role going forward, likely as an executive producer who is not involved in the day-to-day productions. The move comes as Warner Brothers continues to scrutinize its DC movies in the wake of Batman vs. Superman's performance with audiences and fans at the box office. The movie, released March 25th, wrapped its run with $871 million worldwide, with a production budget of $300 million plus. While Warners insists the movie will be profitable, the, mo- the movie will be profitable, it was meant to kick off the studio's DC Cinematic Universe with a billion dollar take, but instead was met with mixed responses from the fans and critics. Christian, what do you think about Charles Roven's reduced role at DC Films? It makes sense. I mean, you know, there's certain people, if they're part of a plan that is not going the way that the higher ups want it to go, then things get shuffled around. And apparently, Roman was one of those guys that they maybe he's not fitting into the overall plan or maybe have the same ideas of the direction that the the dc cinematic universe is going maybe he had maybe his ideas were more before you know he had a lot to do with the batman begins and the nolan stuff so maybe this new because remember that was all set in realistic had, had the sense of realism for uh, all of Nolan's movies. So maybe this new thing is just not his thing. Maybe he just not doesn't know how to contribute the same way. I don't know. It's just kind of speculation. But so they're moving him over to other things. I think it's a move that a lot of people are getting shuffled around. How do you feel about it? Yeah, I mean, I think people are going to see this and get all up in arms about how this is all Batman v Superman's fault. And it might not be. I, I don't want to read the tea leaves too much into, oh, that movie didn't make as much money as everybody thought it would. So now we have to do all these different shakeups and give people different titles. I do think that played a factor, but it also might just be Charles Roven, veteran producer, being like, I don't want to be hands on with this stuff Could anymore. Be, yeah. I don't want to be the fall guy if something doesn't make a billion dollars anymore. I put in my time doing the day-to-day production stuff i'm gonna take a step back plus you gotta remember the dc was bringing in a lot of new blood as far as production goes i mean look at ben affleck is going to be a producer on the new batman movie so if you're bringing in newer people who have different ideas that maybe we haven't seen before that's a positive so roven stepping off this i think it's it, it seems like a good move going forward because dc wants to remain fresh so okay yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely see it as connected with the Batman v Superman fallout. Um, I mean, you know, Robin's been there, like you said, for uh, Warner Brothers for many, many years, decade, over a decade. So uh, the way that Batman v Superman was received, not just by critics, but by, by the public, right. not a lot of repeat viewings. It didn't make that kind of money that it should have made. Um, those have those kind of ramifications that we've been seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of shuffling, but not, that t- not too much. But now this is the big, the first one where sort of like they're downsizing somebody where you were executive producer on all of these. Now you're just going to be a producer on these and you're not going to be involved in these other right. future ones. So it definitely is sort of like moving people around in a way to, 
I don't know about delegate blame or things like that, but I think you were right by saying to leave, put room for other executive producers like Ben Affleck to come in. Right. So. It is nice anytime you go to work and you're not fired, but you're just like, oh, hey, you have less responsibilities, but you still get a paycheck. Like, yeah. it's not, nobody's crying for Charles yeah. Roven today. Like, he still has plenty of things to do. Sure. He'll have some input. It, it sounds like a dream job for me just to kick back in an office instead of being on set yeah. day after day telling everybody what to do. Although it sounds cool and would be fun, you know, badass if he was just like, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to be honest here. I'm going to step back. This isn't the thing for me. Mm -hmm. It's just unlikely that a producer has a chance to work on movies of that size and step away from it. It, it, it more likely that he was he's kind of being shuffled around. Oh, well, especially when this was going to be or it was the launch of the Justice League. And yes. It's like now you're going into Justice League, but there's a lot of cooks in that kitchen right now. So if DC's looking at everybody, they're like, okay, who is essential here, and who do we think maybe we can get out in a lesser role? Robin seems to be that guy. Totally. All right, Ashley, what's next? Marvel made a great impression with their recently released casting announcement for Thor Ragnarok, but as for an official confirmation of the plot, we have yet to be given a synopsis. Speaking with Entertainment Tonight, Mark Ruffalo shed some light on what we can expect from the movie, in which his Bruce Banner Hulk role has been confirmed. When he was asked about the size of his role in the movie, he described it as an intergalactic buddy road movie with Banner and Thor. With him also talking about how much Hulk we can expect, he said, I think it will be smashing. You'll see a lot more Hulk, and I think it'll... The Hulk gets hulkier. The Hulk hulks out, hulkier and bigger. When asked about Kate Blanchett's role in the movie, who was recently cast as Hela, Ruffalo said... She plays the worst of the worst. So evil. She's going to kill us. It's such a great part she gets to play. The Ragnarok opens in theaters November 3rd, 2017. Mark, what do you think of having more Hulk show up in Thor Ragnarok? You know, I'm having a fine time aging the way I am, but I cannot wait. I would skip a year of my life to just go ahead and see this yeah. movie now. This seems so exciting to me. This is the, the Hulk that I want to see because it's not a standalone Hulk movie. Sometimes I don't think that those are the best stories you can tell. I like using Hulk as a complimentary player, but in the biggest possible role you can have. So this seems awesome. A intergalactic road buddy movie with Thor and the Hulk? Are you kidding me? That sounds great. I want to see the Hulk go crazy. Kate Blanchett is an evil villain. That's awesome. But the reason why I'm going to see this movie is Thor and right next to Thor is the Hulk. I don't know that I can remember a movie where it was called like the name of a character. You know Thor is starring in this movie, but most people are going to see the movie because of a different person in that film, that being the Hulk. It'd be a really interesting poll to do. I got one. Captain America Civil War. They're going to see Spider-Man, Black Panther, Iron Man. <laughs> So like it's everyone else. There's so many you know? different ones, but you're yeah. looking for a little the performances. Here, the Hulk is like the dude in the movie right. next to Thor. So well, it's Iron Man. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. But um, I would I love these comments. I absolutely love the comments. And I'm with you, man. This is really, really exciting to see these two because Hulk's going to have challenges. He's gonna be He's not going to be as dominant as he is on Earth. There's going to be a lot of things. He might be smaller than a lot of things out. You <laughs> he know, just hooks out once. He just starts floating away like, oh, this is not a good idea. But, you know, every, th every time you see him, it's like you can't really contain him here on Earth. And he's mm -hmm. always just causing destruction. And, and it's it. look what happened in Ultron, how it took Tony Stark to get into the, the Hulkbuster to really to do something. And even then, that was a, almost a disaster. So to see him out in the universe to where we can out of the galaxy to where we can now see it's not another galaxy but another to where you can is it another galaxy is no, it no i don't think so where's no. asgard no, just in the, another it's, galaxy it's not another galaxy i don't think it's in the milky way no, it's another universe. <clears throat> we don't know we don't know but anyway <clears throat> but to see the fact that he's going to be he's going to be out there and there's going to be a bunch of different challenges for him is exciting we've seen the dynamic that they have even in the, starting in the first avengers where just you know hulk cracks thor mm -hmm. in the side of the head you're going to have moments like that but kate blanchett as the villain mm. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. I want to see her. She was. We had her in a villain, as a villain in uh, Indiana Jones. Didn't work out right. so great. Um, but to have her, to sound, just as the sound of her being really menacing and being the foil for Hulk and Thor. Yeah, I love the comments. Plus, I mean, they perfect casting. She actually looks exactly the way Hela looks in the comics. I mean, that's that's great casting for uh, Kate Blanchett. But I, I'm more I'm more shocked at like not just. The Hulk being, but it's going to be Banner. I mean, I think it's going to yeah. be mainly Banner and Thor hanging out doing a road movie. Less so him staying angry as the Hulk. I think it'll be more like them just kicking back. He's just on, in like, the some, back seat the whole yeah, time. Yeah, some weird wrong. alien llama just, you know, <laughs> yeah. like chilling, talking about, you know, old times. I don't know if it's going to be that exactly. But, I mean, basically they're going to be on like a battle planet. Jeff Goldblum is playing the Grand Master, and that character in the comic books has is uh, is known for 
grabbing a bunch of different characters and throwing them and making them fight each other. It's Contest of the Champions. Right. He's the brother of the Collector, which was uh, you know from the Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. So they're starting to really tie everything in on that cosmic level. So this is definitely, you could see Thor Ragnarok tying in with Guardians 2 and Infinity, whatever the hell they're going to call it. So, I mean, having more Hulk is always good, especially this new version with Ruffalo. So I love I love that it's Hulk here. Right, and, and whereas like Civil War or Avengers, you go to see those and everybody has their favorite person they're rooting for. When you go to see a movie that is headlined by Thor and most people want to see the Hulk, it would be like The Dark Knight is the movie I can think of where, yeah, people love Batman and it's called The Dark Knight, but everybody went to that movie to see what Heath Ledger was going to sure. do as the Joker. This is going to be one of those situations where I love Thor to death. Can't wait to see Ragnarok anyway. The fact that the Hulk is in it this prominently, it, it, a huge upsell for me. All right, what's next? According to The Hollywood Reporter, Simon Pegg and Mike Myers are joining Margot Robbie, Max Irons, and Dexter Fletcher for Von Stein's noir thriller Terminal, which is currently shooting in Hungary. Terminal follows two hitmen played by Fletcher and Irons as they embark on a borderline suicide mission for a mysterious employer and a large paycheck. Along the way, the unlikely pair discover that a dynamic a dynamic woman named Annie, played by Robbie, may be more involved than they had originally suspected. Production is scheduled to wrap at the end of summer, with a possible release date set for late summer of 2017. Schnapp, thoughts on seeing Mike Myers in a movie for the first time in years? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the last time I saw him in anything was in Glorious Bastards. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he played, was playing pretty much a serious role. He was in makeup and had a, affectations, but he was, you know, it wasn't a comedy bit. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to see him in this role. It sounds like a cool thriller. I mean, Simon Pegg's also in I don't know if they're going to break off into a comedy bit later, uh, but it sounds like they're just being in this film. It's a regular style film. It's not Austin Powers, which I think all of us want to see Mike Myers return yes. to Austin Powers one last time, but maybe this is a little preamble. He's getting back in the game. He's going to do a couple more films. So, yeah, I think the, the entire cast sounds great. I'd like to see him play Andy Warhol after looking at that picture. Right. I mean, uh, <laughs> but but I can tell you that I uh, I am excited to hear that he's coming back. I think he's really talented. Uh, the love guru really set him back, and he just kind of retired for a long time, minus Inglorious Bastards. But I think that the last time I saw him in a dramatic role, minus that film, was uh, Studio 54. I think that was the last kind of dramatic role I saw him do. Right. I, I certainly know that he can do the dramatic roles, and I, I want to see – what he's going to do, and I hope you're right, Schnapp. I hope this is him just kind of getting his feet wet, getting back in the game, getting the juices going, and mm-hmm. then we see him come back because he was always one of my favorites, and he's a very talented dude. Uh, yeah, I, I the story itself sounds pretty intriguing. Could be a lot of fun. Great team, great cast, so yeah. Yeah, Mike Myers is an incredible comedic talent, so seeing him on screen in anything, whether it's even a more dramatic role than you might be used to seeing the guy who played Wayne Campbell and Austin Powers doing, I'm totally signing up for that. When you mentioned The Love Guru, and that movie came out around the same time as You Don't Mess With the Zohan, which was a Sandler character Mm -hmm. that kind of missed the mark with critics, but it's so weird to see how people handle criticism differently, how Mike Myers is like, you know what, I'm just going to retreat and just kind of go in and do my own thing and not really put a lot of my ideas and art out of the public anymore. More, whereas Sandler's like, oh, I'll just keep making movies right. that, with all my friends in and just make a billion dollars. I'm not saying one path is better than the other one, but Mike Myers has still been busy, just more in a production or directing you know, mentality than actually being in front of the camera. He directed a documentary called Supermensch about a great uh, manager called uh, Shep Gordon. So check that out if you can. But you're right, we haven't seen him in front of the camera in a while. So anything that guy does, I'm in. All right, so before we get to buy or sell, it's time to check in with Wendy, who's on the Wendy cam, and she has been going through the comments and letting us know what you're saying. What are they saying? All right, for the Charles Roven Roll Reduce that DC story, uh, Thunder God Kiro 770 base. So basically, they're easing him out. Uh, Alia C. Johnson says, it's sad that whatever is going on at WB is messed up because BVS wasn't what people wanted, and Yamil Diaz says they really could use some new blood in DC. For the Hulk, Hulkier <laughs> Thor Ragnarok, most of the chat is very excited that we're going to be seeing more Hulk. Palm Tree says, I've never seen a Thor or, or Hulk film, and I feel like I'm not even missing anything. Alex Smith says, this might be the closest we ever get to Planet Hulk. And uh, yeah, they're all just really excited about a Hulkier movie. And for Mike Myers' return to the movies, they want to know if Mike's hair is really that white. <laughs> and most of the chat is like, you know, he's coming back. Others say they haven't really missed him all that much. Ignacio Padilla says, Mike Myers is a great actor. Great news to know he's back. 
All right. Thank you, Wendy. We'll be hearing a little bit more from her after the buy or sell, which brings us to buy or sell. Ashley's going to go through some more stories in the world of movies. And myself, Schnepp, Ellis, going to buy or sell it. And so are you. What do we got? A new extended look at Independence Day Resurgence has been released, giving fans five whole minutes of plot and character setting up what seems to be the major set pieces and story from the movie. The next chapter in the Independence Day franchise shows humanity using recovered alien technology and collaborating with the nations of Earth on an immense defense program to protect the planet. But nothing can prepare them for the aliens' advanced and unprecedented force when they return to finish when they return to finish what they started. Res- Surgeon sees the return of Jeff Goldblum, Bill Pullman, Brent Spiner, and Vivica Fox, with new additions Liam Hemsworth, Jesse Usher, Micah Monroe, and Celia Ward. Independence Day Resurgence hits theaters on June 24th. Christian Byersell, the extended look at Independence Day Resurgence. Buy it. I'm looking forward to this stupid movie. Uh, I really am. I, I watch this thing. It's I, I don't expect a great movie. I expect a movie that I'm going to jam popcorn into my face. And it, this it got me excited because I saw it really from the lore that they're building on what happened in 96 and, and to now. The only problem that I have with it is that they essentially in this five minute trailer, it, the whole movie, I can tell you certain plot points. I can tell you characters that are probably not going to make it out alive. I can see some of the bad acting in there. I don't care. I want to <laughs> see this movie. I think that and I wasn't even a huge fan of the first one. I had fun watching it in the theaters, and then as it, the years go on, it, it gets silly, but I still enjoy watching it. I, that's the thing, is I always kind of take shots on it, but every time it's on TV, the first one, I'll watch it. And I find myself watching the trailer, getting excited to watch this movie, and I bought everything that I saw in there, and I buy Jeff Goldblum eating an apple <laughs> on a bench. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I buy it. Schnepp? Yeah, I hate that I'm buying this. Right? Yeah, I'm buying it. <laughs> oh, yeah, It's messed up hate you emmerich um i i liked it i like the five minute trailer yeah they show you the whole dumb movie it, it's like <laughs> yeah and you like uh you know that you show judd hirsch like he, i bet he's gonna die on that bench you know big weird things exploding moving towards him and stuff uh yeah the aliens are pissed they're back they got new hardware they like blowing up monuments you know it's 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 kind of like it's poking fun at itself in a yeah. good way it's like you know 20 years later we had time to build up our defenses so did they they're angry they're gonna just mess everything up uh you know it doesn't look good for earth you know i think it'll be a fun stupid film you're right shove as many uh, bags of popcorn in your mouth as possible <laughs> it. uh yeah it looks stupid and fun all right mark how do you feel i am gonna be three pounds heavier and it's all in corn weight after seeing this this is a too large corn kind of movie i'm gonna give you my decision in a second let me give you a little bit of insight into what my day is like so after uh we did movie talk yesterday this trailer hit in the afternoon christian rushed into his office to watch it and i put my headphones on because i didn't want to hear it i got to the office at 7 30 this morning so i could work on some stuff i had hours to watch this for you guys I didn't watch it. No? I'm not going to watch the five minute because no? I don't want to watch it. Okay. Oh, that's, I that's, do that a couple times oh. a year. You guys know that I prepare for this show. <laughs> Unlike any other, I will always work my ass off. Even if I don't want to see a trailer, I will watch it for you guys. I don't need to see this because I know they're going to show me the whole movie. You're telling me you're going to show me five minutes of Independence Day and it's not going to give away everything. Mark, I don't want to le- see that. Let me tell you, <laughs> you don't need to see this because you're already going. Yeah. You're already sold. So, I mean, if you're already sold and you're going to go see this movie, do not see this five minute trailer. I was already sold from the first row. The I'm second saying, trailer showed me all this great action. This, this movie looks like such a stupid good time. It shows you the whole, it's the whole movie. movie. Yeah. They, I'm, I was already like, like I was hating on this film since they announced it as ID Forever, whatever crappy title they had like three or four years ago. I've been hating on it up until I saw the second trailer and I got sold on it when it was like Jeff Goldblum talking about their moon base. Something about that oh, was they, just they, so they stupid. They like the monuments. Yeah, the, yeah. And so. You know, it really kind of that, that one little thing uh, flipped me over. Love that trailer. This trailer's great, but they show you everything. They you do. get a feeling of like that you've just seen all of whatever the two hours combined into this five minutes. You don't need to see it, Mark. No one's going to be mad at you. And don't watch the five minute thing if you're going to go see the movie. Just go see it. That's Thank you very saying. much. And if I get a call from Dr. Collider and he says, oh, you need to watch all this stuff, then maybe I'll consider watching it. But even at that point, it's like I know I'm smart enough to know what I'm clicking on the Internet. OK, and if I already wanted to see Independence Day Resurgence, I don't care if I'm on a movie talk show where I need to talk about this five minute thing. I already buy the movie. I'm not watching this thing. Neither should you. We watched it for you. So. Thank you very much. Who's Dr. Collider? I think he's the guy that owns this place, uh, right? He's a nefarious <laughs> villain yeah, he's from Lafayette. Yeah, sure. 
All right, what's next? <laughs> Deadline is reporting that Adam Sandler and his Happy Madison Productions are set to make an untitled family animated project at STX Entertainment. Sandler has had a long-standing working relationship with STX chairman and CEO Robert Simon, and together they've made eight films with Sandler in the lead role, including such popular entries as Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, The Wedding Singer, and The Waterboy. Plot details are currently unknown, but the deal calls for Sandler to write, produce, and star with the movie reported to be aimed more towards kids. No release date has been set. Mark Byersell, a kid-friendly animated movie written by and starring Adam Sandler. I buy a kid-friendly animated movie written, directed, starring whatever Adam Sandler. I also buy the fact that all those good movies they produced together were in the 90s so it's been a minute but i like the way that i'm hoping adam sandler's career is going okay because if you're gonna do a kid friendly goofy movie then make it for kids and then put the rest of your creative energy into doing the kind of movies that we know you still have inside you when you can make movies that make the adults chuckle and you're not worried about just putting as many friends in the movie as possible make us laugh like you used to be able to do i had the treat of watching adam sandler do a surprise appearance at the hollywood improv last week right and he's on stage and he's working out stuff that you would not expect Adam Sandler to be doing. It's like it's almost like he's like prepping for like a new album, like they're all going to laugh at you, something like that. So I don't know if that was just like a one-off. He's just having a little bit of fun. It was a great performance. I hope to see more of that kind of stuff from him. So maybe he's drawing a dividing line. This Netflix thing that he's been doing, maybe that was the straw that broke the camel's back. And he's like, okay, people are going to start to rebel against me making this kind of content. So I'm going to make some kid-friendly movies in the Hotel Transylvania vein, and then maybe he does something else that we're more accustomed to, like those late 90s movies that Ashley just read us? I'm going to soft sell it um, <laughs> because right now the guy is just not making good stuff. Yeah, uh, Minus Hotel Transylvania 1 and 2, this which is, is aimed, fine for kids. aimed towards kids. Yeah. So I understand the move and the animation to go there. And, and, I, and I hope he's one of those guys that you root for because from everything and I also I had a chance to uh, meet him a few years back and probably one of the nicest people you're ever going to meet mm -hmm. and you hear that about him how people really enjoy working with him and how, how nice of a guy he is and you always root for people like that but the last the Netflix project was terrible the cobbler was terrible Grown Ups 1 Grown Ups 2 I mean he's got a bunch of stinkers in his pocket um, and I just it's just hard to ignore the smell it's, it's one of these things that I'm rooting for him he's a dad he he knows it's not like he's just some random you know some guys oh i think i can write for kids oogie boogie boogie and does it he's he's going to he, he he's got a sensibility to what kids like and obviously with hotel transylvania one and two i'm just nervous from the stuff that i've been given from him lately well i mean i think this will be his second animated film he did that one uh a hanukkah right animated film and that was made for kids and you know i my guess is he's going to do another kind of a, maybe a Hanukkah song type animated thing. It could be a lot of songs involved. Maybe he's bringing back Opera Man, but animated. Who knows? I mean, I think <laughs> this is a good call, I think, because you're right. His last five films have sucked. They've been stinkers. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they're on Netflix or that weird Out of Africa one with Drew Barrymore. That was horrible. There's so many different ones that you just were, were sucky uh, that you're sort of like, you know, and I remember laughing a lot at Adam Sandler and his characters on Saturday Night Live and his first couple films. So I'd like to see some kind of return to maybe – giving an F, you know, and it feels right. like maybe this will be it. So you realize how much we root for these people. Like Mike Myers is a guy we haven't seen in a long right. time. Right. And we're like, just be in anything again. And then Adam Sandler's a guy we see all the time. We're like, just be in good stuff again. Right. Like these guys made us laugh so much in the nineties. Please come back to us just the way we want. Yeah. All right. What's next? Illumination Entertainment has released its first trailer for Sing, the newest talking animal movie that tells the story of Buster Moon, voiced by Matthew McConaughey, a dapper koala who presides over a once grand theater that has fallen on hard times. Now facing the crumbling of his life's ambition, he has one final chance to restore his fading jewel to its former glory by producing the world's greatest singing competition. Taron Egerton voices a gorilla who wants to use his musical talent to win the singing competition instead of following in his father's criminal footsteps. The movie also features the voices of Reese Witherspoon, Scarlett Johansson, Seth MacFarlane, John C. Riley, Nick Offerman, and SNL's Leslie Jones. Sing will debut in theaters on December 21st. Schnepp buy or sell the first trailer for Sing. Selling this, yeah. <laughs> it's like zero interest in seeing this, singing it, singing about it. I want to bury it. 
Uh, animation style, I just instantly don't like. It's, there's not really that much creativity. It's just a bunch of animals sort of squash and stretched into little shapes. Uh, very weird animation decisions, at least from the way I was looking at it. They were in like some aquatic dining room. There's nothing on the plates. No one's eating anything. Watch it again. You'll see there's nothing. They're eating nothing. It's a, empty plates. Then they're in a grocery store. It's just very weird. I don't know what animals eat anyway. So, you know, I don't want to see a pig eating a pig. Um, so I don't know what they're going to be eating. They show a lot of fruits and vegetables. That's, that's all I'm saying. Watch it again. It's very strange. Let's get into just the characterizations and the dumb songs. All of them are horrible. I thought it was just very just you know a high school student talent contest with a bunch of animals doing songs that we've already heard before. It just made me want to throw up. <laughs> Um, <laughs> there you go. Follow that. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to sell it as well. I was, look, my wife watches The Voice, and I was the other day. I was, I was sitting uh, there, she's watching it, and this thing comes on there, and we were both like, oh, it's Secret Life of Pets. This is what our, our daughter really wants to see it. And then within seconds, I was like, yeah, this isn't Secret Life of Pets. It was like it was, we just lost interest. We didn't even know what the hell it was. It was, just, it was, it was boring. It was mm -hmm. dull. There was, I didn't, it didn't catch my attention at all. I didn't really. Uh, it just seemed like they were just trying to catch the voices audience and trying to catch that kind of competition um, audience and not really caring. I, and I, this thing, I, it could turn out to be great. I have no idea. But from what it looked like, it looked the animation looked a little lazy, and I just didn't care about it. I wasn't there. Was like, oh, this is gonna be really funny, really you know, sweet. It, it didn't feel like a Zootopia or anything along those lines. So I'm gonna sell it. Well, it felt like a show that would be airing in Zootopia and one that I would probably turn off. Like yeah. I, I, I appreciate the vocal talent in here. Some of the things can make me laugh. I just don't know. I'm selling it because I don't know how this is going to actually be a feature film that tells a cohesive story. Like, I get that it's just all these little individual snippets and it's this talent competition. I just need to see more from this movie before I get excited about it, particularly when you're being released on December 20. First, here's some other movies going to be in the theater on December 21st. You got your Rogue One that's going to have come out the week before. You mm. got your Assassin's Creed, and you got your Passengers. That's a tall order. I know it's a kid's movie, but I think the kiddies are going to rather see Star Wars or something else around Christmas than this because it is just a bunch of animals lining up to sing. And according to John Schnepp, they don't even feed the animals. They just give them empty plates. Come on. Can I suggest a, a side <laughs> thing? You guys already built these animals. You have the 3D models. You got Taron Edg Edgerton and uh, John C. Riley just make a separate side movie called Murder Apes. And you just have those weird apes wearing them, those freaky skull masks. I'd go see that. You know what? What if the movie gets really dark in the second half and it's like this fun talent competition? Then one by one, all the animals Cut start to, getting picked off. I like it. And it's the two gorillas doing it. That nice. is a great movie. Cut to turtle Sing. sex. Well, yeah, turtle oh, sex is going to be you in. had to go there. Oh, the yeah. full title is to. Sing Sing, like they go to prison. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, 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 turtle sex can be the post credit scene. Right. No, that's mortifying. Wait, the noise? Yeah. That's, that's All what of happened. it. Yeah. Yeah. What could make this movie worse? Turtle sex. Fair. Fair. Right. All right, Wendy, going off of that, what are they saying in the chat room about well, the turtles? Well, for the trailer for Sing, I'm seeing a lot of buys, and I'm also seeing a lot of cells saying they just don't want to see any more singing animals. And Magel Iron Man 98 says, it could be fun, but the trailer did nothing for me. So, sell. Um, for the Adam Sandler story, ZK Nightmare says, Sandler is washed up. The majority of the chat room is selling this. Heath Jones says, Trans Hotel Transylvania was pretty good, so I'll buy this. But I still don't trust his live action stuff. And for the extended trailer for Independence Day, um, seeing a lot of buy and sell for this, Kyle Jacobson says, I'm not excited for Independence Day 2. I like the first one, but I really don't care for another cash grab sequel based off nostalgia. All right, so there you go. That's uh, everything happening on the chat room. Thank you, Wendy. Now it's time for AMC Rewind. Obviously brought to you by our friends over at AMC. We're going to go back in time and talk about the movies that opened 10 years ago and the ones that opened 20 years ago. Ashley, what opened? 10 years ago, there was X-Men The Last Stand, and 20 years ago, there was Dragonheart and The Arrival. Now, obviously, the one that stands out is X-Men The Last Stand because... Remember that even though everyone talks about how this is probably one of the worst X-Men movies out there, at the time, it was following X2, which is arguably still one of the best of all time. So people were 
super excited. I saw this movie in Las Vegas. I remember when I was, that's how I was in the middle of like a really fun Vegas trip and we had to take time out of the Vegas trip to go see X-Men Well, you just really wanted to be away from gambling or you just wanted to be just No, we in wanted a dark to see room. the movie. We wanted to see the movie. It, was a, it wasn't a matter, we didn't want to get taken away from anything we were doing, but it was, uh, we went and it was like, it's time to see X-Men. Let's go. It was in the middle of the day to go see it. And we all left depressed uh. because, and I still say, this is the thing. And I ask this every single time. Schnapp. What's Magneto's, uh, Magneto's power? Um, you can control metal. Then why is this hideout in the woods? Because uh, they were like they ne they didn't show it, but they had this deluxe mansion that he made it was under under the ground, but they never cut away. It was a it. deluxe, not just a normal yeah, run of the mill mansion. Yeah, yeah deluxe super mansion. deluxe. Yeah, okay. it was just it, Brett Ratner is was absolutely the worst person <laughs> to be able to direct. Look, the guy now has is producing. You look at his resume, producing wise, and he's right. crushing. Right, but. Directing X Men, not the guy. It was a bad choice by the studio to to hire him. They should have gotten somebody else. It it really almost derailed X Men completely. So that's the one, obviously, that stands out. Uh, Dragonheart was a movie that is is it, you go back now. It's it's incredibly dated, but it was better than it should have been. And Sean Connery voicing the dragon was great. And the Arrival, underrated movie, creepy dark movie with Charlie Sheen and aliens. I remember seeing that movie in the theater, really enjoying it. It's a good movie. I will say it is a good movie. What stands out to you? Uh, well, The Arrival, I never saw, but I remember just seeing the, the, the ads for it and seeing Charlie Sheen wearing these glasses, and it looked like Rick the Wild Thing Vaughn from Major League was now investigating aliens, and I'm like, ah, I think I'll see Dragonheart instead. So we're going to go see Dragonheart, right? Me and my brother went to go check it out, and I've never forgotten this. We're walking out of the theater, and it was like, okay, it was whatever. It was, it, the effects were really good for the mm -hmm. time in Dragonheart. We're walking out of the movie, and there were these two little nerdlings, and then one huge king nerd walking out there, and the king nerd shot up the nerdlings it was amazing the two nerdlings are bickering about whether the movie was good or not like ah, I thought it was good blah, blah. and the king nerd just shut him up he was like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it was an above average fantasy film it was the coolest yeah, like just it. like and then he drops oh, the mic yeah, yeah. gets in his mom's car and drives home it That's was awesome. like an awesome thing to watch the king of the nerds finally throw his weight around a little bit um real quick before we get to your take our own Ray Ora had one of the best comments I've seen in the chat room. He says, Ray Ora says, John Roca has trailer reactions to both to, to Dragonheart recorded on his VHS. Check out an email later on. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was an above average, average comment above, in the chat above, 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 above. All right, Schnepp, what's Above next? average fantasy right, what, do you, what do you got, Schnepp? <laughs> what, what stands out to you? Well, the arrival was a, an above average science fiction film predicted global warming and climate change. <laughs> <laughs> Almost 20 years ago, it was still happening, but it was aliens doing it. It's a great film, Mark. You will absolutely love the arrival. I That's love good. the way that the aliens' legs break backwards. That's how you know they're an alien. It's yeah, creepy. It's about, an above average alien movie. <laughs> yeah. It's an above science fiction. It's science yeah, fiction above average. Dragonheart was the first how you train your dragon, but it just wasn't animated. It was like you get in, you like the dragon. It's friendly. You can talk. Mm -hmm. Sean Connor. He doesn't want that. And uh, definitely. Last Stand was, a, you know, everyone's disappointed by that film because X2 promised the Dark Phoenix saga, and then what do we get was this weird kind of uneven mishmash that didn't didn't really add up and was was like a it, – it had elements of Dark Phoenix in it, but all done wrong by – just made by people who didn't really understand the material and just were under a really tight deadline. I know that that's a fact that they were rushing to get that film done. I mean, you could tell – Magneto's on the bridge in San Francisco and it's daytime and they literally walk three feet and it's nighttime. Literally. It's like, yeah. it's a very uneven film. It's horrible. This is better less. Yeah. Now that they've retconned it with uh, Days of Future Past, it doesn't even exist. It was, so a, it was a smart play it. to do. I will say that X-Men The Last Stand, the opening of it, the, the X-Men training room, yeah. I always wanted to see what the training room would look like when it's like turned on to level 10. Mm -hmm. That's a cool scene. Then the rest of the movie, <laughs> yeah, it's so a below average comic book film. Yeah. All right, before we move on, just to let you guys know, we see that you've been asking about our Warcraft review. We're actually shooting it today, and it'll be up a little later on today. So if you want to check out what the crew thought of Warcraft, make sure you check the channel and do that. Also, like we had mentioned yesterday, we have a big Schmodown match coming up with Clark Wolf and Finstock. That happens this Friday. And myself and Mark, we, because we have a lot of questions, every single match is like, how do the top 10 rankings work? How What are the next matches coming up? Mark and I put a top 10 ranking and kind of description of how that works on our Schmoes channel. So if you want to go and watch that, it's up now. It was just tweeted out from the 
uh, the Twitter account for Collider. So if you want to check that out, do that. Now it's time for Mailbag, where you guys have been submitting some questions via Mailbag, and we have been looking through them, and we're going to answer them. So Ashley, what are they asking? Albert Coons writes, hello everyone at Collider. I often admire a film that goes the extra mile to end in a less conventional way or to not end where the hero always wins. Films like Ex Machina, Memento, and Seven have endings that hit you because the hero doesn't necessarily win or where a character doesn't survive. While it isn't really a good feeling for audiences, I do think that the film has more of an impact on you if it doesn't have a fairy tale ending. Just think if Batman vs Superman didn't have that final scene, it might have gotten a little more respect from fans should films end less happily if it fits the story instead of something conveniently happening that saves the day for all characters involved what film did you like or would you like to have seen where the ending wasn't a conventional happy ending um look, some sometimes i think that it it definitely could benefit and sometimes i it, i don't want it to be shtick just to be shtick you know mm -hmm. but i'll tell you a, a movie that I thought of immediately that wasn't really a big hit, but maybe it would have with a different ending was The Reaping with uh, Hilary Swank and David Morrissey. And, and so I'm gonna spoil the movie for you. So if you haven't seen it, <laughs> where's the, there it is. So yeah. at the end of the, the movie- The most spoilerific horror film yeah. ever by Christian Arlo. <laughs> at, the end, at, at the end of the movie, they uh, she, she winds up, she's about to sh s kill the kid and find, she finds out that the it's actually, so because they think the kid's the devil. What? And the entire time, uh, it's the fact that the all the people around that were trying to get this kid out that you thought they were religious fanatics They turned out to be Satan worshipers. Oh dear right? God So you could have done a Rosemary's Baby type thing Love where Hilary Swank actually but yeah, but no Hilary but she doesn't kill the kid And so it, so it turns around it goes into that happy kind of ending at what? the end It turns silly so had she done it and then found out the re reveal afterwards that this whole entire time that she found out the reveal of this town right. would have been the kid was actually the good one after she had done this heinous act. That right. would have been like oh, such a mind screw. Well, that's like a uh, spoiler. Rosemary Keep that baby. spoiler list yeah. up. That's like Kill List, where it actually has a real bummer ending. So that's one of my one of my that I just thought of bummer endings. I got a list in my mind, but that's uh, let's, start, let's start off. Like, let's go back in time. Uh, George Lucas. Thank God he made Star Wars. It came out today. How many years ago? 39 years ago. Well, before mm -hmm. that, he made THX 1138. Mm, right. That's one of the films that he goes, he goes, he's very vocal about, ah, I shouldn't have made a bummer ending. I learned then that nobody, like people don't like bummer endings. Well, Lucas, you're wrong. People do like bummer endings. And I love THX 1138 because it adds a sense of realism to the drama, even if it's science fiction, not everything. You can't tie everything up with a little jar jar, yub yub dance scene at the end, unless it's earned. I think it's earned at Return of the Jedi because you've gone through three other movies. So that that makes sense. But like Empire Strikes Back has a bummer ending. I'll, I'll use that as a good right. example for a, a George Lucas thing. And I also love THX 1038. Here's my list. You got Brazil total bummer ending she, like just shocked me i was sitting in the theater as the credits rolled but when, <laughs> when i first saw it i was like oh my god that is depressing uh let's you got uh, blade runner his i'm wearing this shirt it's not a happy ending it's just you know that's the kind of thing you get with dystopian futuristic right. scenes which ones so. would you switch though oh, what's that but which ones would you switch switch out like like, like ones that had happy endings that would be bummering. i would cut out um i didn't even have a list for that but oh. like a minority report right away i would just end it with tom cruise in prison with that thing lowering credit son right. he's Ooh. going to jail bam Hot, here's another one spielberg Sneak. listen up ai ended in the blue fairy thing. I know everyone's like, yeah, it was in the original script. I don't even care that it was in the original script. It should have ended with that stupid little kid robot at the bottom of the sea looking at the blue fairy because that's what he really wanted. So you're actually giving this android creature, which is not alive, which isn't a sentient cre like human being. It's like, you want to say sentient, just like our computers are sentient. So I think it, it should have ended there and it would have had a lot more weight to it and would have made people talk more instead of having some weird floaty, futuristic orb alien creatures giving him his mommy at the end. I was like, whatever. Can, I, it, did you happen to see Dragon Heart opening weekend in Williamsburg, Virginia? <laughs> that 20 was years me, ago? that was me, <laughs> Ellis. <laughs> And you were one of the baby nerdlings. It's a subpar. <laughs> Hey, I should have ended it with the blue fairy. <laughs> 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 All right. You're so Mark. doing a great impression of that guy. Um, I am not going to touch any Schnapps material because that was brilliantly delivered. I am going to, the one that popped into my head as soon as I read the question was No Country for Old Men, where mm. it, it ends. It, 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 a bummer, I get, but but it's just a different ending. It's yeah, kind yeah. of an odd ending. And the Coen brothers are known for doing that stuff occasionally. Um, I just. 
for me personally, I like walking out of a movie feeling happy. I like soaring at the end of a movie. So that's why I love Return of the Jedi and the Up Not Bending so much and why right. Empire Strikes Back. It's not a total bummer ending, though. Like, like we learned a lot. It's like, okay, we're going to lick our wounds. We're going to go to Jabba's Palace. We're going to rescue our friends. We're going to do this. But for you to have to wait three years after seeing that to see if our heroes were going to make it out alive, if Lando was going to redeem himself, that was a long time to wait. So, you know, like, like any stuff on a total bummer ending, um, Free Willy, maybe. Right. It's so what, sad when that kid's pet escaped. What about Planet of the Apes? Like Charlton Heston gets back on his spaceship and comes back to our <laughs> oh, Earth. Right. Screw Ooh. that. He wanted the ending. They blew it all off. You <laughs> right. want that ending with the Statue of Liberty. That's how things should end. Yep. They always screw things up in our world now. They knew they made things better in the 70s and 80s. And that's not, now like, like, going back happen. to what Christian said, that's not a shtick. It, that, that, that's not just ending on a downer to be ending on it's a like downer. A story. That's like a, that, that serves the story yeah. so yeah. well that I can be yeah. on board with that. Yeah. All right, what's next? Chris writes, I was watching The Patriot the other day, and I don't think I've ever wanted to leap through the screen and wring out the neck of a character any more than that of Colonel William Tavington, the British baddie played by Jason Isaacs. Question, which movie character has done the same for you and provoked an equally murderous response? <laughs> Thanks and keep up the great work. I mean, Edward the Longshanks and Braveheart. He's so he's 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 one of those guys that he's so good at being bad and like just evil. There's a guy that I just saw in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang who I thought was a bit over the top, but I still I don't know if it was because he was doing his job so well. I just I hated every time he opened his mouth. He had like if you see Kiss not Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I keep saying that uh, the nice guys. I keep saying Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. <laughs> the nice guys. Uh, the, and if you've seen the movie, which more of you should, by the way, it's one of the best movies that's been out this year. And he's got um, this blue paint on his face, and he's mm -hmm. he's evil in it. And he's just so like almost like it's like cast this guy as the Riddler. It's so he's so like maniacal. But um, anyway, so those are the two that kind of stood out. Girl with the dragon tattoo. The ending when. Uh, mm -hmm. Daniel Craig was all like like Stellan Skarsgård, I think it oh, was. Yeah. it was. Super creepy. I mean, really more like I, I I love villains in all movies. So I really I'm I'm not yelling at the screen or whatever. But like uh, this isn't even a movie. But the last time I was yelling at the TV was watching Making a Murderer. I was like yelling at all the stupid people involved in this horrifying case that got me so worked up that I was like, no, what are you doing? Like yelling like a madman. <laughs> so good. You know? Yeah. So that's yeah. It. I always wanted to, uh, I, I, for some reason when I was a kid, anytime Superman 1 or Superman 2 came on, I always wanted to jump through the TV and just give Terrence Stamp his out of peace of my mind. Like yeah. that, he just always, it, it, he got under my skin. And it's a great performance, but it's just the way he portrays that character. I just, he, I hate the fact that he's on Earth and I need to go stop to him. him. Even though I get my ass kicked by Zod. In the TV realm, I spend so much time yelling at my television television for sporting purposes mm -hmm. like watching a game that i rarely have it for television but game of thrones has some great oh, villains man. like if you want to talk joffrey. about joffrey yeah. that dude it just you wanted to reach through the tv i don't care if he's a little kid and i'd go to prison i would murder that guy why <laughs> for all of us out there that want joffrey gone see i hate bolton more, even more uh I mean, Ramsey, you mean? Yeah. yeah. I like Ramsey Bolton. If I had to roommate with one of them, I'd pick Joffrey. But <laughs> but Ramsey is a guy that at least like it's entertain he's so evil and devious. I kind of want to see what he's going to do next. Joffrey is just a douche. I but they both are, but it's just like I want I mean, I have never been rooting for someone to get killed off more than Ramsey. And this is credit to the actor for right. everything that he's doing and what he's done. So again, I'm not going to spoil it. But and you don't want it to be a quick like poison no, and he's I want, dead and I you want, want a very slow, yeah, yeah. methodical. Um, here's some good ones from the uh, chat room. There, A lot of people saying Joffrey for sure. Uh, Nurse Ratchet is a great one. Oh, uh, good one. Jar Jar. Um, Ooh, Kathy yeah. Bates in Misery. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great yeah. one. Every white person in 12 years a slave for the most yeah. part. That's true. Yeah, for um, sure. That's yeah. a good one. Let's see. Um, uh, DiCaprio in Django. It was really good. Um, Have you guys seen an American Crime? The show oh, with no. Edward, Edward, no, the movie. James Olmos. Um, Catherine Keener was in it. I think Ellen Page was. Oh, in Oh no, it as I didn't well. want to see that. No. I know what it's about. Oh my gosh, the kids I in the wanted basement. to. Ooh, she was. Yeah. She didn't yeah. get enough credit for that role because I wanted to. Smack be her slapper. Right. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right. Um, that's everything happening from Mailbag. And before we move on to Twitter, you guys have been tweeting out. We're gonna do live Twitter questions with 
Ashley. Also, a reminder again that we're going to be doing the Q&A Facebook Live with myself, Schnapp, and Ellis once the show is over. Facebook so, Live? What's that? Well, Schnapp, now that you ask, if you go over to Facebook and you join Collider.com, you're going to be able to see the video, ask your questions, whatever you want to ask. It can be behind the scenes stuff. Same thing you're going to do for Twitter, too. So if you're always, how come Ashley didn't pick my question? She gets so many, she'll get a bunch. And then you guys, if you don't get your questions answered by Quitter? Quitter? Sure. By, Twitter. <laughs> by Twitter, you can go over to Facebook Live, and that's where you can get them answered. All right, Ashley, you picked out some tweets. What did I did. Say? Kyle Anderson writes, what movies other than Independence Day are essentially popcorn movies to turn your brain off and enjoy? I mean, oh. you hope the Transformers is going to be every single time. Right. Uh, just that, that's, that's what you go into. This time it's got dinosaurs. Every, oh. a, everyone. And it's not just the Collider crew. I've heard so many people saying this, that everyone gets duped by those trailers. Mm -hmm. And you hope, ah, I'm just going to just go in there and just yeah. have fun and shove popcorn in my face. <clears throat> that, to me, the Transformers franchise, you hope, is, are, is absolutely one of those things. I thought The Last Jurassic World... Um, was one of those things for sure. Yeah, any of the big movie monster ones, like they had I, Frankenstein, Dracula Untold, and all those. Oh. You want those to be really fun and good, and some of those, unfortunately, weren't that great. So I mean, look, there's not an Orville Redenbacher's farm does not provide enough corn to shove in my face to make me enjoy any of those Transformers yeah. movies. Right. I hope I'm wrong with the fifth one. I don't think I am, though. I would go with the Fast and Furious franchise. Just like you just go back, you sit, you, you try not to use logic too much because you got a car driving through a building into another building and then out the other side <laughs> and then they go to like Wendy's or something and right. the car is fine. So like I, I would say those movies and then Con Air is a really fun one from yeah. the 90s. Oh, yeah, Just one. turn your brain off. Yeah. Enjoy Malkovich being evil. Enjoy Dave Chappelle being hilarious and enjoy Nicolas Cage's beautiful, probably fake extension locks. Here's one yep. that's coming out that you guys can get in on this is a, towards the end of the franchise it's called resident evil six. Oh, oh no. now it's not going to make any sense oh, you love it he it's went probably going to not get great critic reviews Never, but, but it's going to be <laughs> one of the greatest endings of uh, some kind of science fiction uh, zombie dracula thing, something or other that you should see i, I like need the, a lot of popcorn i like how you turn into like an evil <laughs> villain there like, yeah oh, so you'll see you when you walk into you that your popcorn mm, you will enjoy resident <laughs> evil six won't you mm, and if you don't, I'll torture your cat. <laughs> All right, what's next? <laughs> Michael Belton, Beltran writes, just read on Collider that Disney wants to do a Little Mermaid live action movie. Who would you cast as Ariel? If Amy Adams was a little younger, I think, uh, she's kind of perfect for the watch. <laughs> You're too old to be a mermaid. Get out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, Lois. Is that Harvey nice Firestein? You're too old. Hey, yeah. hey. Get him in the alien. <laughs> she wants to be a mermaid, dude. Uh, oh, I gotta call my lawyer. I have to get my Chloe, lawyer. Um, Chloe, Chloe Moretz is she already playing a, a mermaid in too some old, other thing? Old, I got it. Isla old? Fisher. Uh, too, old, too old, too old, too old. No, Isla, she'd be step perfect. into my office, you old bag. Why you're not playing a mermaid? Next. <laughs> too old, too old. Uh, you know who they're gonna wind up casting? I just don't think she can. She can act. Zendaya. No, Bella Thorne probably is who they're gonna wind up oh. getting. But Did I you think, say Boba who? Boba Thorne. I don't know who that no, is. Bella Thorne. <laughs> can I just say Alicia Vikander, even though she's in every movie coming yeah. out? No, you can't. <laughs> Get out of my office. I, I'm sorry. You can't say that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I don't know. What's the suggestions out there? And when, when, we'll, we'll call it Wendy. To Ariana see. Grande is getting what? a lot. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Ariana Grande. Oh, well, she can sing. She can act. <laughs> she was in, wrote, uh, you know. Some fan wrote to uh, counter Harloff's point yeah. about Amy Adams. They wrote that we should Benjamin Button technology. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I love it. Give her a child's body. We don't need a Benjamin yeah. Button. Yeah. No, you definitely need a Benjamin Button but to do that thing. She's got to be like 35, 36, whatever it is. By the time they make The Little Mermaid, she'll be close to 40. And Give her a weird Ariel's fish like body. 17 Just years like old. a weird fish body in her head. She's a teenager. Make it really weird. Um, make kids cry when you, they see this. Yeah. <laughs> She's a middle-aged mermaid. Right. Go. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Up, up, up. We're it's using Benjamin Button technology. We're putting a fish body on it. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta turn him into a shock, you hear? All right, what's next? Ainsley Marchant writes, who are underdeveloped characters you wish you could have seen more of? Uh, Captain Phasma. <laughs> <laughs> Boba Fett. <laughs> Bosk. Yeah. <laughs> I want the adventures of Bosk on my desk tomorrow. 
Please. <laughs> Nam Nub, man. The guy, yeah. the, Nam Nub is apparently way high up in the rebellion because he is the co-pilot to Lando Calrissian yeah. leading the assault on the second Death Star. He is Admiral Ackbar's right-hand go-to pilot, and then Lando came in and kind of threw his weight around, so right. now Nam Nub gets promoted. But what did Nam Nub do? I'm sure it's in the comics. What did right. he do to get him that position where, by the way, there is a monster language barrier between him and Lando. For him to be a competent enough co-pilot to not speak English. the same language... He understands basic. But, but also, Lando does, doesn't speak his language. Yeah, but he's, he's in the Force to Awakens too. That's yeah, Nene Nub. Yeah, he is. He's a, he's all star, man. Yeah, he is, and he's been working with Leia for a while. I will go with uh, the characters from old school then. Yeah, I want to more see more Frank the developed. Tank. Yeah. All right, uh, Ashley, what's next? Adam J. Henson writes, Adam Sandler, I think, would be a great dramatic actor. Rain Over Me is such an underrated movie. What do you guys think? 100% agree with you. I think that's the way to get his career back on track because the guy is really good. Just watched Rain Over Me not too long ago, and it is an underrated movie. His performance is underrated. I love Punch Drunk Love. Spanglish, funny People. Funny I, People. I liked him in Funny People. Yeah, was all, all those are all serious films. He's been in a bunch of serious films. He is, and I think that if, if he starts to do... I wonder why. I mean, I, I don't know if anyone's ever asked him why he doesn't do more dramatic films. Maybe he just his passion is to making those the, the, the turds. I don't know. I, I think his passion is bags full of money. Sure, yeah. sure. I get it. Up, 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 up. His passion is bags full of money. <laughs> right. Oh, That's good. I was, yeah. I was the right nerd that time. That's right. Um, <laughs> I, he was also really... What was that movie that came out a couple years ago where he's the dad? Who's like starts to get hooked on internet oh, porn? Oh right, right, right. It was a Jason Reitman movie. Um, yeah, shoot. it was. Uh, it, it was. A, it was a, a pretty good movie, and he was oh. great in it. And he was also, Schnepp, you're right. He was awesome in Funny People. Yeah. All right. What's next? Drew writes, which movie or movies get better or worse each time you watch them? <laughs> better or worse? Uh, Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind always gets better. It can make you cry. Yeah. Inception um, gets better. I think Flash Gordon, 1980s Flash yeah, Gordon. You yeah. know, what's a Flash? That gets better. And it, Interstellar, it gets better. Interstellar, Interstellar, Interstellar gets better. Mm. Uh, I think Jaws gets better every single time I watch it. Because there's some movies you watch. Like, I rewatched Man of Steel, and I rewatched Winter Soldier, and I like them better than I did the first time. But I don't know upon repeat, repeat, repeat viewings if they still get better and better every time. Jaws actually does get better. The Exorcist actually gets better every time I watch it. I don't know how... They do it. They just keep improving every time I see them. I think Blade Runner, the shirt I'm wearing, gets better every time you see it. I hope um, Mortal Kombat's like that, too. I hope Mortal Kombat doesn't get worse. when I Because I, I plan on revisiting Mortal Kombat very soon. I haven't seen it in a minute. And I love the movie to death. It's the best video game movie ever made. I hope it holds up. Yeah. And I'm nervous about it. Uh, you should remain nervous. The, new, <laughs> the, the remake of Point Break is, I'll tell you, I started to, it, it's got to get worse when you watch it. I've only seen seven minutes of it and it got worse wait, every minute wait, I watched. Wait, you've only seen it seven <laughs> every, <laughs> every it minute. Every, every minute I watched, it got worse. Oh, it's wow. like, and I, I couldn't believe it. From the minute, like the first minute started, I'm like, oh, this looks bad. And then the second minute came, like, whoa, this is really bad. By minute six, I was like, and it was just reaching for the turn it my, off. Right? Where my wife was just like, turn it off, turn it off. We had to turn. I couldn't even finish it. It was so bad. I just have like the saddest dad image on a Saturday of you. Like the wife's cooking. You got the rugrats running around. You Horrible. have a beer in one hand and a stopwatch in the other. I'm just going to sit down and watch Point Break. And it just Horrible. Keeps getting... I mean, it's it's really one of the worst movies I've seen. I was like, I, I was going to give it a shot. And just it's it's atrocious on Can every we do level. A commentary it looks like the Lethal Weapon TV yeah. uh, series Point trailer. Break. Can we do that? I didn't, oh, uh, yeah. I, I didn't hate the, uh, the Point Break reading. Oh. As a matter of fact, I saw the Point Break remake. 50 minutes in, I had to relieve myself. I go to the bathroom. I text Makuga, and I'm like, hey, is this, when does this movie get bad? I'm, I'm enjoying myself so far. I get back into the theater. Something had happened, and the movie got worse. It's, <laughs> it's, it's atrocious. Um, all right, another one. Tom McClellan writes, who is your favorite film character ever? Mm, ever? <laughs> Captain Phasma. <laughs> yeah, Captain Phasma. Mm -hmm. um, William Wallace, pretty damn good. I mean, I know people write me all the time when I talk about Braveheart. It's not historically accurate. Right. I'm talking about movies. As far I don't, as what I, they I don't have a movies. favorite. I, lo I love so many characters. I just think like Snake Plissken. Yeah. I mean, there's so many amazing, yeah. amazing characters. It's hard to pick a favorite. Yeah, I mean, Luke Skywalker and R2-D2 are way up there. I'm Rocky. going non-Star Wars. Uh, Rocky's a good one. If I went sports movies, though... I would probably say Rudy going off the logic right. that I'm not talking about the real life dude that's probably trying to get into an Notre Dame frat party as we speak. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the Sean Astin version of Rudy that I want to be a documentary. That's the guy, one of my favorite film characters of all time. All right, let's do two more. 
All righty. Mark Rudy writes, Rudy, I have a really Rudy, cool Rudy. movie idea. How can I get anyone who matters to listen to read it? Well, th- we've talked about this a couple times. Wait, 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 wait. Is he saying he has a script? He said a cool it's a, it's film a, idea. It's a treatment. Dude, it's, a, it's a pitch at this point. I, there you go. Go for I it. I got the answer for you. L- let your friends read it. That's it. <laughs> Wait, that's the end of the That's a great, yeah. great advice. What do you mean, how do you get some people to read it? You got to say, be what, nice to the guy. What does that even mean? Know. All right. Well, he might, might be 12 years old. He all right. Know. If you're 11, I I'm going to cut you 12. a break. Because <laughs> people, I was just talking with a friend of mine who's a writer just yesterday. He's like, some friend, some guy that I, who's also in the business was like, hey, dude, can you help me make, you know, maybe freshen up this concept, make, make it a little more kick ass? It's like, it's like, it doesn't work that way. If you're a writer, you want to be a screenwriter, you want to be a director, you want to be an actor or something and you live uh, maybe in New Jersey or you live New in Jersey. Kansas, uh, first thing is move, pack up, and come to <laughs> Los Angeles because that's not going to happen over there. It's a lot harder to make that happen. So when you get to Los Angeles, become a production assistant. It doesn't matter for what company. It should be in some form where maybe you're getting coffee for people or you're helping make Xeroxes or faxes because no one's going to read your script. It doesn't work that way. I'm Schnapp's just being dead life. honest. Chapter one, move. Right. Yeah. He's like, get out of here, kid. We yeah. don't want to see your face. You got a good idea. Nobody, Someone no, else came up with it. Get the off. Thing. The horrible truth is no one wants to hear the truth. Instead, they want you to lie. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm just not going to do it. People are like, well, you do this and work really hard and screw that. You need to come out here and start working with people who actually make things and then via trust so that you don't screw people over. Oh, I could trust this guy to give them a better job. And they slowly move up the, and then eventually someone will read your script. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, what's next? <laughs> wait, wait, we're not what? gonna end that with- I, I don't wanna follow that. With that, that harbinger of doom that if you have an idea, you're no, going to hey, hell give, eternally. <laughs> give, give, the, give the kids some uh, some lies. Here's what, no, <laughs> I'm not gonna give them some lies, I'll say this. If you this. come into the office and pitch a good one, we'll yeah, give you Mark cake Ellis might help make a money. movie for you. Want I some money? Have, I have screening room party at my apartment every Friday. <laughs> no, what you do is, if you have an idea for something, you need to write the treatment, then you need to write the screenplay, because if you think it's a good idea now, you're gonna to see it fully realized and you're going to get more good ideas or you're going to realize that you need to take it in a different direction as far as getting the thing into the hands of the right people i don't know how that works i don't really like writing i find it impossible to write in my apartment so i take my computer to a place of public coffee sales and that's where i do all of my writing and then i go back home and i take a nap all right what's next <laughs> arnold fit jr writes in your opinion what is the best book to film adaptation to date Oh, I still say Lord of the Rings. We've had this one. Yeah. Burn we'll do one more. We'll do one more. Burn it. Okay. Burn one it. Bum, bum, more. Jaws. Jaws. He loves Peter Jaws is the best book to film adaptation <laughs> yeah. of all time, bar none. Thank you, Peter Benchley. Bigger thank you, Mr. Spielberg and Bruce. Okay. <laughs> um, Josh Richter writes, who is the best cinematographer of all time? All time? I don't know about it. Because Deacons is up there right now. Mm. I can't say his name right. Yazuns Kolesinski, Kaminsky. Bless you. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah. Okay, Spielberg's I'll say, I'll say because A, I, I like the guy's work, not as a director, as a cinematographer, and B, because I don't know a whole lot of other cinematographers. I'm going to say Wally Pfister. Oh, all right. There's a guy, he did Transcendence and directed, and it's like, oh, boy. But as the cinematographer for some of Nolan's finest work, the guy's got skills. All right. Thank you guys for all the tweets. Wendy, what were they saying about some of those conversations we were having, whether it be about Twitter or mailbag? No, well, they're saying that uh, Schna- Schnepp is <laughs> definitely dropping some knowledge on that question. Um, <laughs> favorite film characters ever, Iron Man, Rocky, Batman, Marty McFly, Ethan Hunt from mm. Mission Impossible and BB-8. And um, which movie gets better or worse each time you watch it, Men, Women, and Children? Mm. Back to the Future, Sucker Punch gets worse every time. And Thunderstruck54 <laughs> says, Waterworld never gets better. And for the casting choice of The Little Mermaid live action, the, ca- uh, the chat room wants to see maybe Ariana Grande, Sophie Turner, Bella Thorne, Emma Roberts, Vanessa Hudgens, Anna Kendrick, and my personal pick, Alexandra Daddario. Ooh, that's a good one. Here's a, here's a, here's a DP, Nicholas Rogue. Nice. Another one. Yeah, I can't, I can't just sometimes answer those off the top of my head. I just yeah, feel bad tough. for the kid who's sitting down week after week to watch Waterworld again, and he's like, like you know, viewing 43. I feel bad Still for just the kid. Still just as bad. Who, I feel bad about a kid who wrote a script about Waterworld, and now he just threw it in the trash. After yeah, because of John Schnapp. Yeah, you should throw, it, should throw it in the trash and then write another one. That's the other thing. 
Do you, just because you wrote a script doesn't mean that's the greatest thing. You write another one, keep writing them. Write like 10 scripts. Because every move. time you. Right. Then move. I'm right. serious. If you want to be a writer, you just don't show up with your brand new script, your first script that you ever wrote. Just keep writing, man. That's the main thing. Then you'll have 10 different scripts. That's awesome. Well, there you go. Right. We're talking about crushing dreams. First to the left, dream crusher, John Schnepp. Where can they find you? You can find me crushing dreams on Instagram and Twitter, just at John Schnepp. You can find my film, The Death of Superman Lives. What happened by going to tdoslwh.com. Mr. Mark Ellis, where can they find you? Yeah, uh, you'll get a happy ending from me at the oh. Comedy Store Friday night in the old-fashioned <laughs> sense, you perverts. And what? I will be on Twitter at Mark Ellis Live. You can follow both Christian and I's YouTube channel, Schmoes No. Subscribe there right the hell now. All right. Miss Mova, where can I find you? <laughs> on Twitter and on Instagram at Ashley Mova. Happy Wednesday, guys. And for me, you can find me, Christian Harloff, Twitter and Instagram. And like I said, myself, Schnepp, Ellis. Hey, Ashley, you want to join us? For Q and A, um, I here. think I have to get on Collider News. But, um, All right, so the three of us will be doing <laughs> the Q and A on Facebook. Go over to Collider.com on Facebook. Join it. Be part of the Q and A. Remember, once again, the Schmodown Clark Wolf versus Finstock comes up on Friday. We put that top 10 video. Check Collider's tweets. Do that. Do all that. Comment. Tell your friends about Movie Talk, and we'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.